you know, I smell it before I cook it, and we find out if it's good, and we're not dead yet, so it must be working. It smells like kitty litter. <laughs> well, sometime when it's close to a bag of kitty litter, it, it indeed does smell like kitty litter. Dude, yes. our apartment smells crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Eddie Herman. Hey, it's Tavern. Make some noise if you're with me, huh? Fantastic. Welcome to Quick Draw Comedy, the show that gives a second chance. In an era of cancellation and condemnation, we offer redemption. Tonight, comedians will have not one, but two opportunities to perform stand-up comedy, followed by an onstage discussion with our panel. I'm your host, Addie Herman. How about it for my co-host, the executioner, Clem Jameson. <laughs> Fantastic. Tonight, comedians will have two minutes to make us laugh. Comics, when you hear this sound, finish up your joke, because when you hear this sound, your set is done, all right. Go ahead and place the mic in the stand. Place the stand on the X. Go ahead and have a seat. Don't worry, you will have a shot at redemption. You guys ready to get this thing started or what? <laughs> all right, all right. On deck, we have Riley Cook. But coming to the stage right now, make it loud for the Dubliner's own, Lucas Schneider. <laughs> We're real fucked up as uh, people. Just the way we think about things. You know, government came out and said aliens are real. First time in my life I've doubted that aliens are real. Right? Birds apparently may or may not be real. I'm not really sure. Went down a YouTube rabbit hole and I'm not convinced anymore. But somehow we know enough that we've got six damn documentaries about Diddy's dirty, dastardly deeds. We know enough to make that, but I'm not completely convinced we went to the moon. Well, as you can tell, I'm maybe a little bit prone to conspiracy theory thinking, but I've convinced myself that the trans movement started as a ploy by women to get men to actually read the bios on Tinder. <laughs> Things just got out of hand a little bit. Uh, Oh, Tinder is the real modern American tragedy, isn't it? Especially once you start closing in on 30, because it's just a sea of divorces and horny single parents, and I'm both, so I'm doubly fucked, right? Oh, what a fucking shame. What a shame I didn't time this out better. I'll be back and make up for that. All right, let's hear it for Lucas Schneider, everybody. On deck, we have Joe Hopkins coming to stage right now. Riley Cook. My name is Riley Cook, and I work in fast food. I'm thinking about changing my name to Rye Cook to Fry Cook. <laughs> the fast food prophet has arrived. He has risen. <laughs> uh, I don't understand people that want to like eat healthy though. <laughs> like what, you want to live long enough to meet your grandkids or just something boring like that? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. I really don't get the people that want to be healthy and then go to fast food to do it. Like even our vegetables are made out of food dye, corn syrup, and asbestos. I'm just kidding. There's no food dye. It's just lead paint. Uh, <laughs> fast food's not healthy. Um, RFK is running for president, which is kind of funny. RFK is also what I call my girlfriend. Really freaking cute. Oh. See what I did there? Switch the C with the K. <laughs> oh, you're related to the Kennedys? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> uh, love you, Rashad. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love Star Wars. Everybody knows C-3PO, right? Uh, I just found out, though, he has a poor cousin named EBTPO. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that deserves your food stamp of approval. 
Um, <laughs> let's see. Fun. Uh, the zoo has an IMAX theater that shows like 3D movies about animals. In case you went to the zoo and didn't see any animals in 3D, yeah, I only like to look at exotic animals if they're blurry and migraine inducing. All right, I'll be back. Riley Cook, ladies and gentlemen. I think we could probably bring mine down a little bit. All right, on deck we have uh, Drew Andrews. Cool. But coming to stage right now, our very own Joe Hopkins. That is my dead name. It's Mr. June for this month. Any, any heterosexuals out here? Any what? Any heterosexuals? All right, we got one. All right. This is for you, my sisters and sisters. The homosexual community in England is embracing the F word amongst themselves. The F word uh, that goes with that rock. What is that rock? The agate. The F agate. Anyways, they're calling themselves F rock, the F rock. And uh, I, I, I think it's beautiful. They use it to distinguish themselves from the gender ideology, pronoun police section. They figure they worked hard to be accepted over the years and just love who they love. And I think that's beautiful. There's another community that embraces a slur, uses it only amongst themselves. Um, you know, no one else can use it like that. What, what, what is that? Rashad, can you help me? Uh, if someone thinks of it, just blurt it out. Anyways, what I'm saying is, I, I think us, I think us sis and sisters, we need to embrace this word. We need to embrace it, because it's basically a slur that means breeder. But we need to make it, it's our word. It's only our word that we can only use it. And that way, when one of, one of the pronoun police, rainbow brain, comes on up and says, hey, sisters, what you doing? Oh, that's our word. Only we can use that word. And what we're doing, it's cis life. It's a hetero thing. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> Joe Hopkins, everybody. Taking a page out of Zane Lovelady's book and wearing sunglasses on stage. Hell yeah. <laughs> on deck, we got Julian Leisure coming to the stage right now. This guy has uh, been on Quick Draw a few times uh, from times gone by. I want you to make it loud for Drew Andrews. <laughs> So uh, on February 1st, I got arrested for a DUI in the state of Virginia, which kind of sucked. But while I was in jail, I made a black friend, a cool guy named Billy. The first thing he says to me is, you look like you're starting Black History Month off, right? And I didn't really know if I could laugh at that or not. <laughs> so ever since the DUI, I've been pretty down about it. But now today, it's kind of cool to know I have something in common with Justin Timberlake. I really hope they release the police body cam footage from Justin Timberlake's arrest, because if you've seen the mug shot, like that arrest had to been funny as fuck. <laughs> Justin Timberlake's all teary-eyed, bloodshot. Kind of like how my wife looks when I push down on the back of her head a little too hard. <laughs> he's, just, he's just got the face of like pure trauma, like the exact same expression as Jeffrey Dahmer's one surviving victim. <laughs> Part of me feels like uh, Justin Timberlake's the kind of guy, too, who got to jail, saw one black guy, and was like, I got to get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> he was probably begging for that first phone call, like, right away. I really hope at least one cop had, like, the nerve to go up to Justin Timberlake and be like, look, Justin, I know you've had a rough night. My daughter's a huge fan. If you just let me take one picture, man, we'll get you out of here nice and quick. All right, thank you, guys. All right, let's hear it for Drew Andrews, everybody. Good stuff. You, you know, when Drew used to come on stage, I always wondered, like, has he killed anybody? But the more I get to know him, now I wonder how many people has he actually killed? 
right? Oh, yes. Heavy Dahmer vibes for that okay, yeah. young gentleman. Hell yeah. Uh, and he has a DUI, or as they say in Nebraska, first base. Yeah. <laughs> All right. On deck, we have Julian Leisure. Uh, oh, wait, no. On deck, we have Zach Kruger. Come to stage right now. Julian Leisure. <laughs> Um, as many of you guys know, I have four kids. Um, I really put the four in fornication. Uh, my mom told me that if I wore skinny jeans, I wouldn't be able to have kids, but that bitch lied. <laughs> uh, I work out in uh, Bennington, which is a suburb of Omaha. If you don't know what suburb means, it just means a place where white people moved away to get away from niggas. Uh, I like to deliver pe I deliver pizzas out there for work sometimes, and it's always great to like ring the doorbell. They open the face, open the door, and I'm like, not far enough. That's all right. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, my weed dealer is a white woman who's younger than me. Yeah. So it always makes me like kind of concerned that if we ever get busted in the middle of our transaction, the police won't believe that I'm the customer <laughs> until they hear my voice. <laughs> Like, no, officer, I'm so sorry. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Hold on. I was born in the year 2000, which means that I'm technically Gen Z, but I have four kids, so I kind of feel like an old man. I feel like I like don't identify with Gen Z. Like, I feel like I'm entering into my grandpa era, personally. Like, if you come over to my house at any point in time, you might catch me doing a puzzle or eating oatmeal. I'd honestly rather be doing that than doing this right now, because you guys kind of suck. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. You guys are all right. Uh, I've been Julian Leisure. All right. Let's hear for Julian Leisure. Really digging himself a hole on the first set. But that's right. This is a show about redemption. I don't think y'all suck at all. Like, you've been great for everybody else. I think it's him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, hot crowd, man. And not just physically. You guys are fantastic. we got some beautiful young professionals in the building tonight. All right, on deck, we have Rashad Vaughn coming to stage right now, all the way from Lincoln, Nebraska, Zach Kruger. All right. Hello, all right. Uh, keep it going for Julian, everybody. Yeah, Omaha's favorite Pokemon trainer. <laughs> I <laughs> uh, hope you guys had a good week. Uh, I smoked way too much weed last week. Uh, you know, when I smoke too much weed, I start to feel like Joe Biden. Just eating ice cream cones and forgetting where I am. <laughs> I, uh, you know, speaking of Biden, we just had Juneteenth this last week and it's over now. So white people, you can turn your phone off dark mode. It's fine. <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> oh, I couldn't tell by your lack of laugh. But <laughs> I, uh, but I did my part in Juneteenth by supporting a locally owned black business, my weed dealer. Yeah, I also bought a bunch of those candy bars from those black kids who go door to door who are raising money for their baseball team. All right. <laughs> Nobody around here, that's all right. Uh, if you can't tell, I'm biracial. Half Bavarian cream filling. And half alcoholic. I don't drink anymore. Uh, now I'm Nebraska sober. Just weed and ranch dressing. <laughs> uh, a lot of people I work with, they also like ranch dressing. I work with a lot of old people. I work at a nursing home, or what I like to call the land before time's up. <laughs> All right, that's all I'm doing. Thanks, guys. Zach Kruger. <laughs> all right. Um, on deck, we have our second round starting. But right now, I want you to make it loud for Rashad Vaughn. Uh, how you guys doing? OK. Uh, thank, uh, thank you. I didn't hear what you said. but. Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna go, thank you, thank you. I, I know I am beautiful, thank you. 
<laughs> yeah, my mom, my mom may be this way. Thank you, mother. Thank you, 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 thank you. Whatever the camera's at. Um, anyway, uh, shoot, I am sober. I finally am sober. You know, until February first, then I'm gonna get blackout drunk again, and then I'll be sober for the rest of the year again till February first. So you guys hear the mixtape. So I'm just trying to reel you in. Um, I don't, <clears throat> I don't believe in competition because number one. I don't want to be you, and two, you can't beat me, you know? And uh, cause people like worried about, always worried about like, oh my God, I don't want him around. Like, like he's too competition. I'm like, I'm not fucking worried about you. Like, worry about you, don't worry about me. That's why you lose it, cause you're too busy worried about other people. Like, worry about yourself. You worry about yourself, you, you don't, you, nobody can't fuck with you. Like, you in your lane. Like, stay in your lane so you won't create, so you won't get out of your lane because you create too much traffic by being in other people's lane. You know what I'm saying? So, because that's why you're a lane because you're trying to be in other people's lane. So, stay in your lane. You know what I mean? That's why I always stay in my lane. Don't worry about other motherfuckers because I am unique motherfucker, you know? Not to toot my horn, but beat, I am a unique motherfucker. <laughs> I'm very unique, you know what I mean? Because people ask me, like, Rashad, like, why are you so happy? Because I am a very unique motherfucker. So, that's, I'm a unique motherfucker. I'm Rashad Vaughn, and I'm very unique. Thank you very much. All right, let's hear for Rashad Vaughn. He is, uh, he is very unique. One of the most unique characters we know. Yeah, unique's definitely the word. <laughs> yeah. Definitely the word. I've been looking for that word for months. Unique's the one. Thanks, Rashad. Hell yeah. Learning words and life lessons with Rashad Vaughn. All right, let's hear for all the comics you've heard in this first round. All right, on deck, we have Riley Cook coming to stage. Lucas Schneider. I can tell I'm getting older, for sure, though. Uh, the day I hit 30, I had about four eyebrow hairs just change direction on me. What a fucking pain in the ass. Like, eyebrows going through their own midlife crisis, I guess. I guess I know what, uh, now I know what all the authority figures in my life felt about me. I never go in the direction I was supposed to. Wow. Uh. You know, a, wild, a real wild thing to experience is uh, walking into a hair salon when a lady's in the middle of getting her hair done. Because it's a lot like walking in on somebody taking a shit or in a very other awkward position. They always cover themselves like this, which is weird because they've still got their clothes on and that cape thing. What they need to do is cover up that tin foil meets high Milan fashion show. I fucked that up. Oh, well. How's everybody doing tonight? I'm really sucking it up. This is a real bad night for me. Uh, holy shit. Ugh. Anyway, all my life I've uh, always been into older ladies, you know, MILFs, cougars, you know. But uh, if I had kept the same age gap, eventually it was going to end up with saber tooth tigers, and uh, I didn't need any of that. <clears throat> That's something else to say about MILFs, too, but I guess it didn't come from the heart, otherwise I wouldn't have fucking forgotten how to say it. Anyway, fuck it, let's just get this over with. Shoot All me right. now, please. Yeah, yeah, give that man a warning shot. Not a warning. <laughs> Wild. Okay, now I see what it is. You've, okay, I was, like, I was like, Clem, why do you sound like me when you make the sound effect? <laughs> I mean, I, I took the clip from Carter Dean's when he couldn't find the right button to make the sound, and he did it with his mouth, so. <laughs> <laughs> when it really should have been. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, deep fake, man. You don't see anything. Oh, shit, how's it going, man? Make yourself right at home. Man, what is up, buddy? Oh, I'm just here living. You're just here living? Well, yeah. I, uh, that writing, remains... Writing some... shit jokes, apparently. Well, no, you wrote some new ones. I liked, the, I liked what you did, a Diddy's Dirty Dastardly Deeds. That yeah. one got a pop. And that was an example of alliteration, or as Rashad would call it, alterations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a good one. There you go. I'm glad, uh, you, I'm glad you crossed that one off the list there. Yeah, I got to cross that one off, just moving on down the line. I do like that uh, the comics have been uh, writing new stuff and bringing notes, you know? I, I don't mind that. 
I, I thought it, maybe you were reading off your shopping list at one point, but, <laughs> you know, well, you know, you need to do that, too. I live in the fucking country. You only get one shot at going to Costco, so you know, sure. make it count. So uh, were you predominantly raised in a Costco or a Sam's Club family? Neither. Neither? A small town grocery store. Okay, so just like the woods or something. Yeah, That's where you yeah, get your basically. food? Basically. We had to go 90 miles just to get to a Walmart. So. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's the American economy well, still, at work. Still do, technically. <laughs> yeah, well, you, sure. You, you pass $400 generals on the way to Walmart, oh, I bet, yeah, though. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's like Monopoly. If you get $4 generals, it's one Walmart, then you get a new piece or something. Wow, oh, damn, is the, is the value down that low, huh? Yeah, something like that. Well, ever since uh, the old man died, the Walton family's just been running into ground. Uh, sorry to get uh, deep into the Arkansas war. Wow. Um, I like this outfit. You look like you're in a porno remake of Fight Club. <laughs> how'd, you, how'd you get that footage? Uh, yeah, well, uh, his name is Robert Paulson. Uh, so, um, <laughs> so uh, you, this is a new, a new type of fit. I don't think I've ever met you when you didn't have a tie-dye shirt on. Really? Yeah. Maybe. Well, yeah, I wear a lot of them. Well, so, so what, uh, what made your uh, decision uh, today to kind of mix it up a little bit? Oh, well, you know, I just... Been really feeling black lately, so I just yeah. To wear it, yeah, yeah. You you said it's it's. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. It took, it look took at you. One of the few black people in the room to get it, but yeah. Hell yeah. Well, you know we have a great crowd. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, you yeah. better watch out. You're gonna have a third baby mama by the end of this show. Ooh, God. <laughs> oh shit. Okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. Be careful. I, I, I always am careful. Uh, you, you had mentioned uh, how your eyebrows are run amok. I wasn't going to say anything, but I also uh, have dealt with that in the past. I have what you call Arlie Ermey eyebrows. Are mm. you familiar with the actor oh, Arlie oh, Ermey? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, they just go crazy. One time uh, I took advice from a girl, and she said, you should shave up your eyebrows, and I used a Bic razor, and that was the wrong thing to use. Really? Yes. Well, now, see, I would have done the same thing, so sure. I'm glad you could teach me that. Hey, I do what I can for the community. Oh, yeah. I liked when a minute in you said, how's everybody doing tonight? That's always when I like to uh, kind of get a good, a good tempo yeah. of the crowd. H halfway through the show when it's already been going and you've been <laughs> bombing. How you doing? <laughs> no, everybody <laughs> thinks they're bombing. Honestly, I think everybody's been doing real well tonight. What do you guys think, huh? Yeah. Hell yeah. The pressure's on. It's been a wild week, uh, but we're here for it, bro. Hell yeah. So, uh, I mean, besides staying alive and not wearing tie-dye, what is something exciting that's happened to you in the last seven days? Mm, I got sucked back into playing a, a very nerdy video game. What? What's that? Civilization VI. Oh, oh I'm man. A, yeah. 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 I'll waste fucking days playing that. If you're gonna be a nerd, Civ VI is the way to go. Mm, yeah. Well, uh -huh. It's. I'm there. They announced uh, Civ Seven coming out, and then it got me all excited. So I bet I yeah. got sucked back into it. I'm not being productive at all. My whole fucking life's gone off the rails. Dishes piling up. Laundry's going to hell. Really? So how long uh, will you play Civ Six in one run without using the restroom? Six hours. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Easy. Well, that's not bad. Uh, the, uh, as soon as I get home from work and supper's made and that kid's ready to go to bed, I'm on it until I can't keep my eyes open anymore. Okay. And then it's off to the, the post office. Yeah. To want to hang myself every day. Yeah. Well, you say you hate yourself every day? Uh, well, yeah. That too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, I wasn't sure if that was the Civ 6 or other choices. Well, that but. too. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. I'm losing at that. I still can't beat the computer. It really yeah. sucks. I don't want to show my age here, but I miss Civ 2. So, I mean, yeah. I was definitely a Civ 2 guy back 30 years ago, whenever it came out. So, Well, it's, you stick it around long enough, they'll, they'll have a whole loop, and a, it'll be like a Marvel cinema type thing where we come around to having Civ 6 and Hangman in the same game. Nice. That would be wild. Hell yeah. Well, shit, um, so how did you meet your best friend? How did I meet my best friend? Uh, we worked together when I was in high school. Yeah. We worked at a uh, place called Bombgars. Are you familiar? Bobgars? Bombgars. Bomb I can't Gars. even spell it. It's B O M G A R R S or something like that. Uh, what it's, like, it's a, basically it's a farm supply store. Okay. Is what it is. And we both worked there. And oh. uh, me and some kids I went to high school with were sitting in the back putting grills together. Oh, you were putting grills together? Grills together, yes, for displays. And this uh, other guy walked by, and he just stopped out of nowhere, never talked to any of us, said, Like, you guys. teeth grills, or...? No, like, uh, to cook on. Oh, okay. For, for to cook. That makes more sense. It's a farm supply store, not a hood supply store. Yeah, uh, sure. And uh, he just walked through and said, you guys talking about boners? 
So that's a really weird way to introduce yourself, pal. I want to get to know you. <laughs> okay, so he's an interesting character. Yeah, just a weird guy. I'd, I'd catch him practicing his golf swings in the aisles when he thought nobody was looking. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, well, he sounds a little uh, on edge, but I like that. He's a fun guy to hang around. Sure, I got that, man. Well, uh, let's see here. Anything you want to let these folks know before I get you out of here, buddy? No, just as always, come to the Dubliner on Monday nights. It's uh, the best thing you can do on a Monday. Absolutely. It's a fantastic room. Oh, yeah. It starts at, uh, put the list out at 8.30. It starts at 9. Everybody gets five minutes. And, uh, yeah, it's a great time. It's a great room. All right. Let's hear for Lucas Schneider opening this thing up for us. Okay, on deck, we have Joe Hopkins, but come to the stage right now, Riley Cook. Addy, you have the most beautiful eyebrows I've ever seen. <laughs> They're so much better than Lucas's. Lucas's are so bad, he walked the ladies that he was flirting with during his set. That's <laughs> awesome. Um, I'm sorry, Lucas. <laughs> I've lived in Nebraska my whole life, and I actually take a lot of pride in it. <laughs> Come on, man. I, I, I take so much pride in it that I got this really cool uh, beach tattoo on my arm, because nothing really says Nebraska like palm trees and paradise, right? <laughs> um, another thing about the zoo that I forgot earlier, I went there, and they have it like divided up into different sections of the world. They got like the Asian, gra Asian highlands, African grasslands, like they even got the American food court, all the uh, processed foods a boy could want. It was awesome. Uh, does anybody else hate when their friends hang out without them? I, uh, I actually figured out that my friends were hanging out without me on the news. <laughs> the headline said that Vladimir Putin was going to North Korea to see Kim Jong-un. I didn't even get an email. I wasn't even doing anything that day. That kind of sucked. Uh, good stuff. Um, oh, Disney Plus, they, uh, they got a... a uh, what do they call that? A documentary on there about the Jonestown suicide cult. Uh, but more importantly, there's this big trend online of something called Disney adults. <laughs> That's one cult that makes me want to commit suicide. <laughs> All right, we'll end there. Thanks, Addy. What's up with the beautiful eyebrows? Hey, Clem, nice let's face. Let's hear for Riley eyebrows. Cook, everybody. Like How you it. doing, buddy? I'm good, Addy. How man, are you, man? I'm good, man. I like that. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, no, I'm, I'm fantastic. Uh, flattery will get you nowhere, but I do appreciate oh. it. Uh, Disney Plus uh, uh, having a documentary about the Jonestown uh, disaster. That seems a little off uh, off key for them. Uh, I think it's just like a Mickey Mouse clubhouse. Where are they now? <laughs> okay, so sort of a uh, Jonestown, but told in the form of Mickey Mouse clubhouse. Yeah, shit hit the fan with Pluto. Yeah, well, I heard he was unhinged. Uh, he was. He, he got tired of people calling him a dog. Um, so, man, I thought you had some real good jokes in that first set. Your second set, honestly, was not terrible, but it was, I mean, you were very, uh, you were very poised, very smooth. I could tell you've been working on mm. it. Thank you. And that's good. Uh, the great Seinfeld said, preparation is knowing your lines. Did you say great and Seinfeld? Yes. I got caught up on that part. Oh, not a big fan of uh, old Jerry, huh? Uh, no, Pop-Tart movie. That was sick. I liked that. That was here. <laughs> that was good. That do, was... You, do you not like Seinfeld because you're anti-Semitic, or is it uh, something else? Nothing. You got nothing? Now's not the time, dude. <laughs> well, you know, you mentioned here about your friends in North Korea and Putin. I got to say, though, if, if we were sending spies to Russia to spy on Russia, this is a perfect cover story because nobody would believe that you're spying on Russia from a damn runza. That was a very good reference you made there. Not many people know that uh, Renza is actually from Russia, so thank you. It does sound very Eastern European. Uh, you like it. Yeah, anytime you, you have... Dracula? What's this accent you got going <laughs> on here? Uh, yes, it's Step Dracula, actually. People don't understand that about Step Dracula. He's not actually really Dracula. See, I wasn't Dracula by birth, but I was the Dracula that was chosen at the end. So you're just going to ramble on shit in a weird voice and make people laugh? Is that the goal here? 
I can't do better than you were at making people laugh. So, ha, 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 one laugh, ha, 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 two laugh. There we go, man. You were about five seconds from getting cut off, but you pulled it together there at the end, man. That's fantastic. I was about to say the only thing you and Dracula have in common is. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite lines from your set tonight was, fast food's not healthy. That's a hot mm. take. Hot take? Uh, this is the kind of cutting-edge material that I've been waiting for on Quick Draw Comedy. Dude, fuck Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I ate Arby's, I broke uh, one of my remaining teeth in half. And that was five years ago, and I still haven't got it fixed. So I'm in a great mood. Which one was that? Can I see? Uh, it's all the way back here. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll get in there later. We'll you'll get in there. We'll get, we'll get the stethoscope out or something. I don't need that. We'll be um, let's see. Oh, uh, our, uh, that RFC joke. I uh, mean, it's cute. It is, a, it is a cute joke. Yeah. So is your girlfriend mad at you based off your writing? Yeah. Uh... What? Well, you know, th th that you came out and said uh, RFK is uh, what I call my girlfriend, real freaking cute. Yeah. So was she upset at you at the time? And you're like, honey, come on, you're adorable. No, I just saw RFK's and thing was on the news, and, you know, I just wanted to write a joke, and then I made the little thing in my head, and then I remembered how he switched the C with the K, so I thought I could switch the C with the K. I thought it was fucking funny. Oh, well, sure. I thought it was I thought it was adorable. Oh, thanks. Uh, it, w it was nice. Um, let me ask Ask you this. How much? How much weed do you smoke? Not enough, Addison. You got really? some? Uh, so how much is not enough? I don't know. Are we like measuring? What are we measuring? In four right, cups. Well, let's two pints. One, two. What so are you? You're going through two ounces. Oh, this is our uh, our unmiked correspondent mm. over here uh, adding on to questions for mm. me. Chief Wiggums. Well, sure. So you you say you're smoking two ounces a week? Did I hear that correctly, Riley? <laughs> Uh, I thought three pints. Three pints. Okay, so we're going. Uh, how many? How many milliliters of weed are you smoking? Uh, I don't know, man. What are you guys? Okay, well, moving Shitty right the FBI? fuck on there. Yeah. So the. Uh, if you don't it, have any fucking weed, then drop it, brother. Oh well, you just talked yourself out of a weed pen. Ah. All right. So um, I liked EBTPO. That was good. That you would like probably that? Uh, it hit real hard towards the uh, the hey, less. Hey, shut the fuck. up. What? Huh? It hit real hard though. What? It hit really hard with the people who How many who mushrooms white. did you take? Yeah. You're like are you okay? All over the place, man. Are, are you from Jonestown and did you just escape or what's wrong? RFK's dead. All right, simmer down. Thanks, Wiggums. Okay. Well, Riley, I mean, where'd you meet your best friend? Um, Willy Wonka's factory. Okay. Uh, who, who out of the characters was it? He wasn't in the movie. He was just a different guy. He was cleaning up some stuff and okay, nice dude. So like one of the cameramen on the production of Willy Wonka? No, I a real fucking factory asshole. There's people in the factory, oh. and they they have janitors because it gets dirty. They make candy, and so I decided to make friends with the janitor. Okay, and how tall was he? I thought you were playing me off. That was just the music on the other side, so that's why I stopped rambling. Oh, I'm considering it. No, yeah, yeah that's cool. I was waiting. Um, how tall was he? He was really tall. He was Actually, a real tall guy. Yeah, he got stretched out in the stretcher, just like the other boy in the movie. Okay. Well, yes. That's good. I mean, I always do like a good topical reference. I do, too. Uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Let's see here. So you... Uh, <laughs> So you say your best friend you met at Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. I said that. What about the real answer? Oh, uh... Do you have a best friend? She, yeah, my girlfriend. Your girlfriend's your best oh, friend. Yeah. That's cool. I thought you were my best friend, Daddy. This kind of hurts. Um, well, 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 we'll work on that later. Um, Riley, is there anything you want to let these folks know before I get you out of here? No. Okay, fantastic. Thank Let's hear you. for Riley Cook, everybody. As Rodney Dangerfield said, it's hard to do this when you're coming down off drugs. All right, so... <laughs> this is what quick draw is. It's just me quoting better comedians. Great. All right, on deck we have Drew Andrews. Coming to the stage right now, Mr. June. Thank you for getting it right, but I think we're gonna go back to my dead name. An old English name, Hopkins. My dad was very big on vocabulary, English vocabulary, so I'm gonna talk about an old English word. 
English means burning stick. And all young men are burning sticks. That's, uh, and when, when I was a kid, you know, one of our, would meet the kids and say, yeah, my mom was all over me, making me do things. And, and, and from when a, when a burning stick is burning really hot, that's where we get the word flaming from. But um, I always thought that uh, because in England, cigarettes are called in the old days, it, it'd probably be a good idea for an anti-smoking campaign if we said, do you realize every time you're smoking a cigarette, you're sucking a You know, but anymore, I think people, that had just increased smoking. Um, anyways, um, and then, but, but from that, I think the progression of that word to the F rock, I think it comes because, you know, maggots like stinky things. And, you know, like piles of shit. And I think we got from that burning stick to uh, the I think uh, it's because that's for the guys that are willing to put their burning stick in any old shithole. And I think because, you know, today with the increase in anal sex, I think uh, most of us All right, let's hear it for Joe Hopkins. <laughs> Make, making Clem's job real tough on this episode. Listen, whoever heard the podcast, that was not Morse code. We weren't communicating. That's just a bunch of bleeps because he kept saying words that I can't put on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I was literally about... I was talking the, the English word for burning stick, which is what they call cigarettes in England. Well, yeah, we hey, can I, bu can I bump a fat? What context it's in, they will just no, take I, the video down. I actually went to write it down to make a note, and I was like, oh, this is a hate crime. I can't even write this down in my notepad. You almost got me, Joe. You guys, I, I was uh, an you see, that is why I tried to be Mr. June, and, and I thank you for using my correct, but I thought I should go back as why you should not dead name me, because I will go back to doing stuff like that. Okay, so which one's your dead name? Because now you're back to Joe, right? Because well, you took for for right now for, for okay. right now. Okay, because you took the glasses Actually. off for a second. I thought you had run this material on your wife, and you had a black eye, and you wanted to cover <laughs> that up. She, she said, "All right, Joe, that's yeah. it." No, I no, I only run the good material on my wife. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's good. Say, so stay at home, honey. I'm <laughs> I'm gonna come out here and uh, do uh, two minutes of uh, things that'll have to be censored off of YouTube. Uh, what, what's, uh, I don't even know. Um, I, I mean, I mean, his set's gonna sound like a Skrillex song. I don't know. I don't know why the, you know, the homosexuals in England, they're, they're embracing the word now. They're using, of course. Well, so um, how do you know? Do but, you but I, I, I keep up with the international news and what's going on. So and a lot of people don't realize that there's a divide within the rainbow community, the old school, uh, the old school that fought for decades to be accepted for loving who they love and just, you know, just let us let us be what they want in this new, new uh, transgender ideology, word police, what I call the word police Nazis and pronoun police. You know, they're just, um, and there's there's a divide that if you don't accept everything, and a lot of them say, you know, we're not we're not into changing uh changing gender we we actually we lo love what we love and just just you know we don't want to be associated with that and so they're kind of there's a divide but it's hard to be talk about it because so what's which, which news political. platforms are you finding this information on was this like on cnn or something no cnn would never talk about any divide was within that that, that community yeah they no, no. MySpace. Oh, okay. no. MySpace, yeah. No, this I, is... Uh, well, so, I mean, yeah, so you're hearing about uh, the, uh, the folks across the pond, the, the blokes over there. Uh, yeah, I have, I, have, I, have, I have connections. I, Like I say, I used to work with a couple gay comedians, and I have connections within the homosexual community and okay. stuff like that, and how the, you know... Um, I think that's well, our new merch. It's going to be a like, shirt of Joe. Like I have connections in the homosexual community. <laughs> I like that, Joe. Well, what I like about you is you go for it. You always go for it. Uh, and I mean, what? Uh, did you have a good Father's Day? Last week was Father's Day. You're a father. 
Yes, um, I, I think I got, I, I got a happy Father's Day from my daughter and son-in-law. And That's great. You know, What'd y'all do? Um, just went to church together and ate, got a, got a Bass Pro sh- gift certificate and yeah. that I'll use. Did the pastor have any thoughts on your set? Or were you maybe influenced by anything? I, I did not. There? The pastor does not, did not, we didn't discuss Okay. We don't discuss my sets. Okay. Well, that's fun. Uh, how about the, the usher? The usher. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, the deacon. Well, I'm not sure which denomination he is. Uh, the 20. So you had a good Father's Day. You went out. You hung. You went to church. Uh, you hung out with hung the out kid. with my Hung out with my wife. Did some work down at the lake. Uh, yeah. You know, and just... That's good. Uh, buried some bodies. Or... Uh, no, no. It's building a uh, building boat dock, uh, oh, building cool. uh, building a dock for the ramp so that you can get in and out of your boat next to the boat ramp and uh, building building that right now. Spending the time and hooking up the floats to the wood, buying wood, hook the connection stuff. Okay, well that sounds great. Yeah, Joe's got a great property uh, that's not as scary as you think it would be. You get out there and it's it's not bad. We're gonna be hanging out there more. Uh, working, working some material where uh, we'll be far away from any uh, folks who might be able to hear it. And you too. Oh, Ju- <laughs> June's almost over, and, and I get to go into the, the stuff that I want to get working on. But I gotta keep, sure. gotta keep with the theme of the month. What are we f- offending in July? That's what's next. Yeah, who's July? J- July is just uh, it's talking about women and stuff like that. It's like. The, the, yeah. the stuff that they say, it's like they don't even listen to themselves. I, and I'll give an example. My mother, when I was a kid, she used to say, you have the ugliest toes. I mean, you, you, I've never seen toes so ugly. You have the ugliest toes. And then five minutes later, she would say, why don't you ever wear your sandals? Why don't you wear your sandals? It's like, because I don't want to show the world my ugliest toes. Oh, I mean, sure. so I, oh. I, I only wear. See, I thought that March was misogyny month for you, but it's July also, or? It's year round. It's year round. It's, year round. Year round. Gotcha. it's, uh, it's never in it. It's never. Women are such a source of goodness, and they give us so much and so much good material that it's. Hell yeah. Let's hear it from women, a, huh? Yes. We love women here on this podcast. <laughs> All right, Joe. Uh, I appreciate you coming out. I'm going to go ahead and get you going. Let's hear it for Joe Hopkins, everybody. Okay, on deck is Julian Leisure, but coming to the stage right now, I want you to make it loud for Drew Andrews. All right, uh, in an attempt to strengthen our marriage, my wife wanted to talk about our love languages which uh, if it sounds like a trap, it's because it probably is. Uh, she sat me down and she's like, I just don't feel like you do enough for me without me asking. My love language is acts of service. Kind of feels like you want to fuck a slave, babe. Sorry, <laughs> acts of service, not for me. I didn't say that though, I told her I understood. I said, I hear you loud and clear. I get it. <laughs> she's like, well, what's your love language? So I just showed her the video of that girl going, hak to like, you're not speaking my love language enough, babe. <laughs> uh, I wish people would argue to defend drinking and driving the same way they fight against gun laws. You know, because anytime someone talks about gun laws, there's always someone that's like, my parents taught me how to use guns. I'm a responsible gun owner. I'm not the one going to school and shooting those kids. And those same arguments apply for drinking and driving. Like, my parents used to drink and drive with me in the car. I'm a responsible drunk driver. I didn't drive my car into that school. (laughs) I know school shootings are a big problem in our country. I just hate how every time there's a school shooting, some fucking idiot goes on the news and says some shit like, we gotta ban the guns, or we gotta arm the teachers. I think we should arm the students. I don't think it'll make the problem go away, but I'd like to see Dylan Klebold get a Columbine kill streak when the entire student body's packing heat. I think we should arm all the students. Maybe not the transgenders, their suicide rate's high enough already. (laughs) And And for the retarded kids, it's nerf or nothing. Anybody like love on the spectrum? Yeah. Yeah, I don't watch it, but I am excited for the next generation of that show because you know these people are just fucking all the time. And if you think one of them has the patience to put on a condom, you're dead wrong. 
I don't even have the patience for that. Hey, let's hear for Drew Andrews, everybody. Oh, shit. Bringing some laughter to the room, man. That, was, that yeah. was fun. Now, that is how uh, you're homophobic correctly. I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to laugh. Joe applauded it. He exactly. Was like, yeah. It's Pride Month. They want to feel included. That's what this month's all about. Sure, it's important. And, you know, I've been saying for the longest time... We should have, you know, folks are so upset about, uh, you know, all these trans teachers. I think that all male teachers should transition to females so we can pay them even less. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That cut spending a lot. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then they you buy the some school supplies with the money they save. Yeah. You have kids, right? I have one. You yeah, have I got a one. little girl. Uh, is, is she of school age yet? No, she'll be starting preschool soon, though. Oh, preschool. That's a okay. weird question, Andy. Well, yeah. Well, uh, well, I was just wondering what the school... Uh, purchasing supplies would be like you know when i was a kid it was it was so uh like you go in you get your ruler and your pencils and all this yeah it's a different day and age because now they just ask that the kid knows how to use an ipad <laughs> which is just every fucking kid so <laughs> yeah give her an ipad you're good yeah like, how are they with uh, microsoft word yeah. yeah she's she's more of an excel kid oh honestly. okay well excuse yeah me. she loves spreadsheets and just typing fucking numbers in sure so has she been raised on the uh the uh, appliances the yeah, we like to let her use the oven every okay. once in a while on the stove. Good. She can cook. She's pretty good for a four-year-old. <laughs> well, I think it's important to you know teach the kids young how to work a stove so there's no incidents as they get older. Exactly. It's yeah. kind of like firearm safety. Teach them young. Exactly. There yeah. you go. Yeah, we give her the gun sometimes. Okay. But... She doesn't. She's too loud for her, you know. She doesn't mind waving it around, but it's the noise that just scares her. She sure, hates that. it's hard to get uh, <laughs> child size earmuffs. Yeah, unless you go to the Mickey Mouse uh, <laughs> Club house. I think they have them there. Uh, so you, uh, when's the last time you held a firearm? Uh, probably shouldn't say. That's oh, a, <laughs> okay. Well, no, not too long question. ago. I actually went shooting with a buddy, a few buddies recently. Okay. I mean, I don't buddies? have a gun, but they do. We just went for probation, right? Around. Since we're recording. Yeah, yeah. For legal reasons. Yeah, this guy hasn't touched a firearm since he was <laughs> in the Hooskow. I've never shot a guys. firearm since the potential charge. That's. Do you have a DUI? Yeah, yeah, I got arrested for a DUI. Uh, what February age were you? First, right? uh, I was 27, 26. Oh, late so. bloomer. I like yeah. that. Yeah, it took me a while to get my first DUI, but... What were the conditions of it? Can you discuss it with us? Uh, well, I was in Virginia, and first off, I slowed down. There was a traffic stop in an oncoming lane, so I slowed down as we passed that, because that's just what I've been taught. And I pulled into a 7-Eleven to get gas in the vehicle, and three cruisers just rolled up behind me, and they're like, you went too slow back there. That's dangerous. Like, That's crazy. You've been drinking tonight? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you know, you know. Yeah. And then I reached for his gun. Uh, <laughs> Which we got that charge dropped because my lawyer, <laughs> the lawyer I had argued that I'm a tax paying citizen, so technically it's our gun and I wasn't really a threat. So, <laughs> so we got that yeah. charge dropped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's good to have a good lawyer uh, that can get you out of illegal things. Yeah. 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 My lawyer's last name was Bong. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Mark Bong. And I was like, that's my fucking guy right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's going to get me out of this. It's like the 007 of getting people out of yeah. shit. Yeah. Uh, he had a good rep. I slightly <laughs> inebriated, but. And driving through what that school. <laughs> what did you blow? Oh, only .113. Oh. Which in Nebraska, that's sober. Like, in Nebraska, you get pulled over with that. They're like, just go home. Get out of here. Get out of <laughs> you here. scamp. Get out of they, here. They wanted me, though. They, they were ready to lock my ass up. They were looking at putting me in jail for eight months. Really? Yeah. The reason, as you might remember, I had actually requested to be on the show like two other times before and then bailed mm -hmm. shortly beforehand. That was because this whole legal battle. The state of Virginia wanted me in jail, and then uh, they wanted to take my license for a whole year. But then I had, a, I had to hire an attorney in Nebraska to like fight to keep my license. So like every time I scheduled to be on the show, I had lost my license for a little bit, and then my lawyer pulled some strings. But it's just been a fucking shit show. Well, I, so are you kind of clear? Yeah, of I think the, I'm good. The, hey, that's great, I'm in, man. I'm in like a weird driver's license limbo. The state has agreed not to take my license, but it's like a cop by cop basis. So if I get pulled over in Nebraska, a cop can just be like, "We see these charges. I'm taking your license," but I won't go to jail. So that's okay. kind of a plus. So they'll take your license, and yeah. then you got to go get your license renewed? or No, then I'm just fucked for a year oh, until so like, all the charges pass. So depending on how bad so. the day of the cop is that pulls you over, you might not yeah. be driving for a while. Yeah, huh? 
Unless I travel a lot, so I'm not really in Nebraska much. So okay. if I get pulled over in another state, they can't touch my license. They can't do anything. I'm good. Okay. Well, I mean, it sounds like your lawyer has, has all the angles covered, yeah. man. Steer clear in Nebraska, though. My lawyer literally said, just lay low for a year. <laughs> I'm like, sure. all right, you're my guy, man. Don't do any podcasts or anything. Right, yeah. yeah don't, don't go anywhere on the internet saying some dumb shit. Like, just... Fly under the radar. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Well, I mean, it's good to have you back. I'm, Feels I, great. You know, obviously, you, you did have to cancel, but you texted me ahead of time, which I appreciate. Yeah, yeah, definitely a little yeah. short notice, but... Uh, and you got a nice shirt. I like that. Thank you, thank you, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, it is Bucky's. Dude. I got a problem. South. I buy a lot of Bucky's. You shit. buy a lot of Bucky's. <laughs> huh? It's pronounced Bucy's. Bucy's. Right? Yeah. Bucy's. Oh, no, Texas is going to get us again. Kill us again. That yeah. place is great. <laughs> Hell yeah. And you, uh, you are a radio tower technician, yeah, right? Yeah, I work on cell phone towers. Cell phone towers. So I do like inspections and shit, really. It's well, easy you got work. the height for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that bad. A few yeah. hundred foot fall, six foot tall. Yeah. You, you ever see anybody have any whoops a daisy? on those? No, but not too long ago, there was an incident with a crew we were working with in York. Some guy got fucking stuck under some steel they were putting up on the tower, and a lot of first responders had to come out and save his ass. They got him? <laughs> yeah, I don't know how, though. He had to have been on drugs. He was... <laughs> He was a dumb guy from the start. So it was like, when it happened, we're like, this does not surprise any of us. <laughs> like, yeah, we could yeah. totally see it happening to this just, guy. Just whenever something bad happens, it's like, oh, of course it was that guy. Right, yeah. He was fired before it happened. They were like, eh. Uh, you're fired, man. And then he did that. So they fired him, and then a cell tower fell on him? No, he just got pinched under some shit. They were putting equipment on the tower, and he was between the equipment and the tower. and just became part of it. He just belonged to the tower at that point. <laughs> so is this individual still alive? Yeah, they're good. It was just his hand. They, like, managed to, like, lift the steel, get him off the tower, and, like, life fly to them. But it was, like, just his hand that was all fucked up. Oh, so his hand got pretty messed yeah. up. Oh, yeah, you got fucked up. Okay, <laughs> got man. Fucked up well, we're going to have to look at faces of death later. Yeah, Watch it's a good thing. time. It's a good time. <laughs> oh, uh, before I get you out of here, I did like the joke. I don't even know if it was intentional about uh, your parents being your designated drivers to school in the morning. Yeah, yeah. They That's like to drink. funny. Yeah. It was... The reason my parents would yell at me for turning that light on was because my dad was drinking and driving. Like, he was like, don't draw any fucking attention. He always had a cold Coors Light. Oh, okay. Console. Well, it's very refreshing on a hot day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He'd, uh, he'd drink a few Coors and then just beat the shit out of my mom. He just... Okay, dark turn. Hand in hand. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. She liked it. Well, comedy <laughs> comes from darkness, and exactly. uh, there's a lot of it happening here tonight. Um, is there anything you'd like to let these folks know before I get you out of here, Drew? Yeah, uh, remember, if it's true love, it's not incest. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's hear it for Drew Andrews. Hell yeah. That guy is a very fun interview. Is that last part true? Is it not incest if it's true love? I don't know. We're going to have to have a meeting about this afterwards. Yeah. Get to the bottom of some of these points. For sure. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hey, let's hear for our ace bartender, Bob, on the other side of that wall. Make sure we tip him well. He deserves it. He needs to buy more uh, muscle shirts. All right. So on deck, we have Zach Kruger coming to stage right now. Julian Leisure. Um, I honestly think where Joseph went wrong with his set is that he didn't do it in like a rap song. So we all know that the last place you can still say F is rap music. I think that like black people are like the last people to get the like the memo about homophobia maybe. I don't know. It's like, I think we invented like homophobia, like pause and like no homo. It's just, I don't know, nothing funny about that. Uh, I've never been like a cool guy at all, like ever. Like I used to eat lunch in the library and when I was in school. You can't be cool and eat lunch in the library. Like, me and a librarian were on a, like, a first name basis. And I know that she wasn't trying to fuck me because I, like, I was uglier than I am now. But she like would always like buy books that the library didn't have specifically for me. That's how much of a loser that I was. I, uh, I had like a specific rule just for me where I could check out more than five books at a time because I would read them. <laughs> I don't know, this is more sad than funny. Sometimes I wish that my mom was in the anal and maybe I wouldn't have been born. <laughs> Damn, sorry. Uh, I think that if I were white, I probably would've owned slaves. That's all. Uh, do you guys think when trees get cut down, Mother, mother Nature lost an erection? All right, just gotta try stuff. Uh, I got in trouble at work recently. I work at a pizza place, and uh, one of the kids that works there, he came up to me and he asked me, he said, do you know where a cutter is? And my, my brain's kind of fucked up, and I said, usually blue hair dye. 
black long hoodies at the high school. <laughs> you can't say stuff like that. It's bound to get you in trouble. Uh, that's all. All right, let's hear it for Julian Leisure, everybody. How's it going, buddy? Pretty good, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Man, I, I like that joke about uh, you uh, d doing having your lunch in the library. I went to laugh at it, then realized that I also used to do lunch in the library, too. <laughs> too relatable. Yeah, it was very relatable. <laughs> Nerds. I know. <laughs> Clint would just eat lunch at a rally. That's where he would always do it. Yeah. Hell yeah. I love rally racing. What the hell are you talking about? Hey, he likes to Good go fast. Shit, man. He's a fast man with a fast plan. Um, so yeah, that's fun. So your librarian, uh, is it true that you, uh, you, she, there was maybe some sexual chemistry between you two? Not at all, I wish. That would have made me cool. Okay, so maybe uh, it was, it was one-sided or no-sided? No-sided, she kind of looked like a librarian, like not a hot librarian, but Oh like yeah, they go down quick, yeah. It's like, it's like she's 23 and hot and then she's 73 and 73. Did she ever take her hair down, take her glasses off? She may have been the hot librarian, you just didn't know it. She was not. She kind of looked like you with a wig. Okay. So, so Addy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, yeah, no, Clem's actually, uh, he, he's looking even more like Elmer Fudd than before now. I mean... Yeah, what, what's up? Did, did you cut all your hair off? Well, you know... <laughs> no, you gotta show, you gotta take been, your hat off and chill the camera. Well, yeah, I've been wow. so inspired with Joe Hopkins set later, and, you know, that... That I decided to look like him and cosplay him in life. And Skinheads, dude. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, you got a good hairline, so that's good. Yeah. Well, I mean, Rashad keeps saying that uh, white people with beards scare him, so I shut my beard off for him, and he didn't even appreciate it. Yeah. He kind of looks like Walter White a little bit, though. Yeah. yeah I get yeah. that all the time. <laughs> Walter like, White power. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one right hey, there. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. So I was wondering, uh, I mean, maybe, maybe the librarian would have liked you more if you told her that you were mad from where the wild things are. <laughs> okay, sort of a, uh, a timely joke, and this wasn't the time for no, it. That was, a, that was a good joke, but they didn't read the book, but I read the book. Thanks. There was some screaming harlot on the other side of the wall that uh, really stepped on my punchline. Well, they yeah. were still angry at what you were saying about me earlier. So yeah. That's what that was. That, that's actually the crackhead from Tuesday coming to defend your honor against me. Honestly, that's the real reason I shaved everything off, so that she wouldn't recognize me and come back for revenge tonight. I, I kind of feel know? like this is like a slave auction, honestly, between, sitting between these two guys. Well, how much I do you think? I guess $6.00. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you would you would be the only slave where the number went down as they auctioned. <laughs> Not very strong. <laughs> great, great writer. Yeah. Great writer. Um, just free him. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, it's a reads weird a, place. Reads to a go. lot of books. At the end of it, they're just like, you can go. Yeah. <laughs> like he's too headstrong. He reads too much. <laughs> yeah. Do you read a lot? I used to. I don't anymore. Okay, so I no. read subtitles. You read subtitles. Yeah, I read. I guess uh, I what's read. your uh, What's your streaming uh, platform of choice? I don't have one of choice. I have all of them. You have all of them? You have all the platforms? Well, not all of them, but all of the like, ones that everybody has. All the ones that everybody has. Okay. Uh, do you have Pluto? I do have that. Okay. Well, I don't you... know if I pay for it, but somebody else might pay for it. No, if you're playing for uh, paying for Pluto, that's a Ponzi scheme you've been engaged in. <laughs> they have decent content. Nothing against Pluto. Uh, I, I do like, I, I like uh, that you say black people were the latest to figure out what homophobia meant. That's very funny. Uh, I like that the kids are calling it No Diddy. Yeah, that's a good one. I forgot about it. That's a good one. That is good, man. Uh, my, dad, my dad also didn't like when I wore skinny jeans. He said I would turn me gay. Or that's, that's what he told you, right? No, the skinny jeans was about having kids. Oh, okay. It would, it would reduce your sperm count. Yeah. And clearly it hasn't. I mean, you're a fertile guy. Very much so. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, it, it definitely, uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. I remember, I remember one time I wore a pair of pants that were so skinny that my dad said, no, you're not going to have those, and then he threw them away before school. <laughs> that sucks. That's like a hate crime. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, nowadays it would be. I'd be like, you don't get me, Dad. <laughs> he threw away my skinnies. He threw away my skinny jeans. Now how am I going to put my balls down one leg and my dick down the how other? How am I going to tuck? Yeah, real talk. Tugging was a big thing. I yeah. actually, uh, I, I remember one time, the hardest I've ever sat on my balls, I sat on a, it was a bicycle seat. And I, I kind of rolled them forward and sat on them with all of my weight. I was a big 11-year-old, uh, 180 pounds. Yeah. And man, it did not feel good. Yeah, I've been gaining a lot of weight recently. And I knew that when I crushed my balls in between my thighs when I was trying to take a shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was awful. Well, so what do you attribute to your weight gain? Uh, just having kids, eating a lot of sweets and pie, and... I bet, I bet. Yeah. yeah, you gotta eat for five now, or whatever. 
six. Six, yeah, and because women never finish any meal they've ever started. Not my girl, she fucking eats. Okay, well, I wasn't gonna say anything, but yeah. Hell yeah. I'm trying to call you fat if you watch this. <laughs> Well, you said it, and I, uh, I okay, so, um, <laughs> how did you meet your best friend? Uh, I don't have a best friend. You don't have a best friend? I was in the library too much to have friends. Really? Yeah, honestly. Okay, I mean, uh, so do you, do you have a, a, a somebody you, you are a pen pal with, or? I used to have a lot of, in, you know, like, internet friends. Uh, internet friends. Yeah, huh? I used to have, like, I don't have you ever heard of, like, a spam account? A spam account. I think Summer just ordered $500 worth of candles from them. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, like, Instagram pages, like a, like a, or, like, a Finsta. It's, like, a fake Instagram page. It's, like, your alternate page where you kind of can, like, shit post and post whatever you want to. Okay, so, like, uh, like uh, the Patreon, but for broke people. I, I guess, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, fantastic. <laughs> This just sounds like your regular Facebook page from what I've seen, all your shit posts I've seen on the comedy scene page. You've turned that back in the last six months. You tired of getting people hating you or what? I'm trying to, I'm trying to chill out. I want people to like me. I want to get booked on shows sure. and stuff. Sure. That is so. big. Being, uh, it's kind of become a theme on this show, being able to work well with others. And I think Quick Draw, and especially the way you do it, uh, is good because you come out, you have a fun interview, you know how to listen, and then you know, contribute also. And I mean, I, I think I'm seeing a lot of growth in you. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, no no problem, son. Tell your mom I miss her. You look like Thomas Jefferson who fucked his slaves. Well, you know, I have been known to clean up with the African-American community. They do like me. Well, you kind of look like Kanye Midwest. <laughs> That's one of my jokes. <laughs> It sounded familiar, but you know, oh, yeah. I thought I wrote it. I thought one. I was stealing Addy's joke, honestly. Oh, no. <laughs> I wish one. I came up with that one. Man, that's great. <laughs> yeah, no shit. All right, we're not going to get into that. Okay. Man, is there anything you want to let these folks know? I know you got a podcast that you've been producing. I, I don't even do it. Any I'm about to start doing it, but... Um, I have this new idea that I want to do. I want to have like people write in or like call in and just with situations, and I give advice, kind of comical advice about whatever situation you're in. Okay. I just haven't figured out how to like set that up yet. Okay. Well, it's in the works. Uh, whenever you get it rolling, be sure to come out, and we'll give you a nice plug. All right. Thank All you right. guys. Let's hear it for Julian Leisure, everybody. Huh? Oh yeah. On deck we have karaoke with Summer, but coming to stage right now, Zach Kruger. All right, how are we doing, everybody? He said he looks like uh, Kanye Midwest. He actually, I think Julian looks like 2.1 Savage. <laughs> or like a, like a black Naruto. <laughs> uh, like I said earlier, though, I work in a nursing home, but you know, some days when I get there, I feel like I'm walking into a gang fight. You know, like I feel like the nursing home is divided into two gangs the blood clots and the cripples. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I work with like a lot of scrawny ladies at my job at the nursing home and they gave me the nickname, the line cook, because I'll flip your grandma like a burger on a Blackstone grill. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think a Blackstone's a pretty good investment, but an even better investment is flipping houses. I think people who flip houses are kind of like pedophiles, you know? Big risk, big reward. <laughs> and they love to redecorate an interior. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, but speaking of people's holes, though, uh, recently I discovered that I like getting choked in bed. Yeah, when, right when I start dozing off to sleep, my girlfriend unplugs my CPAP machine. Yeah, I'm choking and gagging, but you can call me a Chevy truck because I'm hard like a rock. <laughs> All right, I don't know if I had much more than that. Uh, sorry, guys. Um, I, uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I'm doing. Thanks, guys. Zach Kruger, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I guess I was close on time anyway, so. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Chilling. You're chilling? Yeah. Well, it's good to have you. <laughs> good to have you. Thank you. I, I was planning on being here, yeah. <laughs> One of these days, I'll be able to start doing quick draw from home, but that's a long way from home. 
Uh, man, a, a Zoom podcast. <laughs> a Zoom podcast. Yeah, I mean that's how bad it was for a time there during uh, you know COVID. Yeah. yeah. I take my I take my vaccines by mouth, but yeah, I, yeah. I could see it. How many times did you get vaccinated? Just the first two. The first two. Yeah. The the, the sequel. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> man, so uh, is it true that you've been working in a nursing home now? Yeah. Is that a new development? I mean, I used to do it, but okay. kind of circled back, and now I'm there again. Oh, it's so cushy you... hours, so I can't complain. So. so you're no longer at the Taco Shack. I'm doing both. You're oh, so, yeah. moonlighting and uh, gaslighting the old people. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, so I mean, I, I've heard that these uh, these uh, old people homes. I mean, they're just giant orgies. Do you have any credence to this? That's incorrect. Okay. Most of them are in wheelchairs, so they can barely even do anything. So. Okay. I don't know where that got started. Maybe in like Florida or Arizona, I could see where they Florida. can still walk, you know? But. Yeah, yeah, you got those <laughs> healthy uh, lizards walking around. Um, I like that you called it the land before time's up. I think that's a very good joke. Thanks, yeah, that's a new one I've been working on, so. Yeah, that's good, man. I can tell you've been writing. How often uh, have you been getting up lately? Well, um, kind of haven't been getting up as much, but with this new job, I'm getting situated, so we'll be back in full gear soon enough. Okay. So, so uh, do you ever do uh, any uh, jokes on the old folks? Sometimes. Yeah. How does that, how's the response? <laughs> well, you usually can't hear me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is the worst part about doing stand-up in a nursing home. They have to turn on their hearing aids to get any of the jokes. I like hanging out with the old vets, though. They're good time. Yeah, you got yeah, some old vets? Vietnam vets and shit, yeah. You got any guys that uh, maybe were injured or got purple hearts out there? Uh, I haven't worked there long enough to know yet, but I'm sure some okay. of them are. Yeah. Sure. There's well, definitely... Yeah, never mind. Oh, that's... A, go <laughs> ahead. I'm dying to know. No, it's all right. Oh, okay. Um, so, whoa, one of my favorite transitions of all time, speaking of holes. I like that one a lot. <laughs> that deserved more than I did. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, you're talking about Pokemon. I like... You look like an all-over print Pokeball in that shirt. That's sick. <laughs> let's see. What did I... I said... Addy looks like he plays Guitar Hero with the kids before he fucks them. <laughs> well, it's nice that you think I would be that generous with it, you know? The vibe with the, with the unbuttoned shirt, you know? Well, I got to, man. My chest is just getting so jacked from all the push-ups I've been doing before sets. Looking like a pansexual pirate. <laughs> Arr, you gay. <laughs> So, so you're working tacos, you're taking care of bedpans. Is there any time you ever accidentally do the wrong thing at the right job? What's that? Is there any time you ever uh, mix up the tasks, you know, between making tacos and cleaning bedpans? Have you ever had any mix up? Like you, you fold a, a woman into a burrito or something? Well, that's every day, bro. Uh, okay, so you've been dating, huh? Well, yeah, easy pickings at the nursing home, dude. Okay, <laughs> so there wasn't an orgy <laughs> until you got there. <laughs> dude, they all fuck with the Crocs, too, so they know how it goes, dude. I you bet know? they do, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever uh, mixed your Crocs up with the ladies when you're leaving in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> no, they were, like, size 5, so. Oh, petite, huh? Okay. <laughs> I'm starting to like this more and more. They like my big white Croc. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, you get a Slim Jim for that one, buddy. What if I didn't have a Slim Jim? Okay, here we go. Hey, Slim Jim, that's my favorite resident. Slim Jim. <laughs> Hell yeah. I mean, I, I, what's, so what, what's the biggest uh, penis you've seen at the nursing home? Black. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all knew that. I was hoping for maybe a measurement. Uh, how many milliliters was it? No, I don't know. <laughs> you said millimeters? I said how many milliliters? Oh, a couple liters, bro. A couple liters? Okay, Fucking so he, he had that uh, like Coca-Cola. Like a hog, dude. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, was he hard at the time, or was it just sort of a dangler? The dangler. Okay, that's how you know it's big, when it's hanging. I don't, I don't want to tingle that dingle, you know what I'm saying? Well, sure, you don't. I mean, and plus, these people have uh, sundowners. You, know, you could wake up to a, your head getting chopped off by an old guy. <laughs> do you do the night They might shift? have sundowners, but the guys have sun uppers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, the priapisms in the morning. That's really when I find myself most aroused. 100%. Well, it's because for, for maybe six hours I was asleep and my mind had tricked itself into thinking I was dead. And then I wake up and I'm like, oh, man, that, that's where my erection oh, was. Still horny. Still horny, yeah. <laughs> Gets me fired up in the morning. Uh, let's see. So uh, how did you meet your best oh. friend? Um, 
and like, well, I've known the same best friend for like 25 years since like preschool or kindergarten or some shit. So how'd you His meet? mom worked with my dad too, so we just were always like around each other and stuff. Okay, you guys, you guys would go hang out, uh, eat eat tacos together and stuff, and yeah, play video more games. like eat unseasoned goulash. You know, we're in the Midwest, so. Oh man, that's tough. Yeah, that's tough. I remember uh, I had a I had a friend named uh, Odie uh, back in the army, and Fucking she used to a dog. Yeah, no, yeah, she. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't say it to her. She was a feisty one. But no, she uh, she used to get on me all the time. She's like, Herman, white people don't know how to make food. They don't know any seasoning. And then I had some of her fried chicken. I was like, Odie, this is just salt. I I, I can see why heart disease rates are so high in the African-American community. This is crazy. (laughs) I think you should go by Herman now as your stage name. I should, man. I'm going to have to be like Joe and have a dead name after this week I've had. (laughs) People are like... You know, my favorite joke that you've ever done happened tonight. When It's when you said that he looks like your favorite Pokemon trainer oh, yeah. or whatever it was. <laughs> that was a good joke, man. <laughs> like, oh. That's probably the best thing you've ever said. It's never going to be better than that for me. <laughs> it's just so accurate. Look at that guy. Like, if you're picking a Pokemon character, that's what you're picking if you're not racist like me. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. I'm not racist anymore. I used to be. He's, that's not, right. he's not kidding. He's not kidding. Reformed racist, Clint <laughs> Jameson. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm man. I'm bummed you cut your hair, though, dude. I had I had a couple ready for you, but it's all right. Yeah, that's why I cut my hair. <laughs> that's right. Well, Moving you used target. to look like a Mad Max person who made moonshine, but not anymore. Yeah. Now you just look like an IT guy for a Disney villain, but... Okay. I don't know. Both of those have been pretty accurate at different parts of my life. <laughs> yeah, so yeah you're just complimenting hurtful. him on his work right, ethic at this right. point. <laughs> that's right. Hell yeah, buddy. Well, what's something you want to let these folks know before I get you out of here? I don't know. Just eat more red meat and don't eat vegetables. Okay, know. eat more red, ve- red meat, don't eat vegetables. Yeah. All right. You heard it here first. Let's hear it for Zach Kruger, everybody. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. On deck, we have Rashad Vaughn. But coming to the stage right now, this man is not a comedian, but is one of the funniest human beings I've come to know. Over a lifetime of music, he has learned thousands of songs, but has never once learned how to sing. Tonight, you will have, you will hear one minute from a song. Wait, no, that's not the intro. We do it all. All right, fantastic. Tonight you will hear a song from days past, then have one minute to name that song. Please join me in welcoming Karaoke with Summer. Okay. Get to the club in my taxi cab. Everybody's looking at me now. Like, who's that chick that's rocking kicks? She's got to be from out of town. That's right. That's right. Morgan wins. Uh, let's hear it for Morgan. Get that woman a slim jam. Hell yeah. Okay. Um, we have a special gift for the winner of this one uh, made by our own Ashley over here. This is a karaoke with summer leather patch handmade by Ashley presented to the winner wow. this week, Morgan. Thank you. Thank you. Hell yeah, summer. Yeah. Show it on your cardigan. <laughs> Hell yeah. Man, so uh, summer, I mean, great, great job. Uh, I mean, they got this one. Well, yeah, Morgan got this one. Well, yeah, I was there. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, what, I didn't know you were a big Miley Cyrus fan. I'm not, but, you know, try to mix it up. Try to, I mean, the week before I did a 55-year-old song, I thought, we'll spruce this up a bit. Well, sure, and they got that one, too. Which they got means, that one, too. <laughs> which means you are getting really dialed in with this. Well, well, yeah, that's two in a row, yeah. yeah. I'm taking a look at it, you know. <laughs> yeah, but in baseball, you get three strikes, so, you know. <laughs> well, you're not going to get fired if they get the third one or anything. It's yeah. okay. We're not going to can you because you were too good well, to I them. try to. I hope they get it. I try to put it up there for them. Yeah. And, and now two in a row, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, great job. Uh, I love the shirt, man. The dad. Very, dad. Hell, yeah. That's good. I don't think I've seen that one. I've known Summer 11 years, and he will wear new shirts every day. It's crazy. 
Um, so, Summer, what is uh, something that's been going on with you in the last seven days? Something exciting that happened to you? Something exciting. Well, trying to prepare to take this heat tomorrow because I have an exterior job. Yes. And, you know, it's going to be hotter than the hinges on Hades tomorrow. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, I'm kind of preparing for that, and I'm glad we got extra water and stuff, and we'll get some in the fridge, and you know, need plenty of cold water tomorrow for sure. So, I, I do always like when I ask how you're doing, and it just turns into like a to-do list for the next week. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, that's how I'm doing, preparing for that, and just going along <laughs> one day at a time, you know, boom, boom, boom. Summer literally is the embodiment of let the past be the past. <laughs> yeah. Always yeah, on the Yes, next. definitely a lot of it. Sure, you know? yeah. <laughs> Well, so I've, who, how did you meet your best friend? Well, I went over to this house. It's in Little Rock. You know where it's at. It's on Louisiana Street. And I went into this house, and I, 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 was, I, I knew another guy that was in this house, but then the people that owned the house said, you know, you ought to meet this guy that's Graham's brother named Addy. And I said... Uh, well, okay, where do I meet him or what? And, and, and so then, you know, that worked out. But it was Dana who called it. After she gave me a bowl of soup, which the soup was pretty damn killer, really. Hell yeah. Well, you, you do love a good bowl of soup, man. You made some split pea soup uh, that was just divine, man. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, great stuff. Great soup. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's really more, it's genuinely more of a fall winter soup, but well, I won't, I won't we had the you. ingredients there at went. Sure, so. you, you had found some trash ham, right? Yeah, that was some trash ham. <laughs> Yeah. All right, can, can we get a definite? I think I know what trash ham is, but can you tell me what trash ham is so that well, everybody out, out there in the world out knows? Out of an eight-yard dumpster, I pulled this ham that was still frozen out of it, and then I used it. So that's what trash ham is. Trash, yeah, Clem. <laughs> trash ham is pretty much exactly what I thought. It, I yeah. thought it was either that or spam. I wasn't sure which one no, it was. No, it, it was actually a, I'm actually uh, Omaha Steaks ham. Wow. Yeah, somebody had thro had taken all the steaks at and they threw all the way the hamburger and the ham and all that, and it was still frozen when I got to it, and I'm like, whoo. There you go. Yeah. So was there like an expiration date on it or anything? Of course. Well, I'm sure there was. <laughs> But you didn't cook that into the ham or anything? Um, not that I know of. The ham smelled good. I ate a little piece of it before I used it, and I went, yeah. Was Riley Cook alive when the expiration date was still good? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny. Yeah, 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 it's probably better not to look. You can't get sick if you don't look at expiration dates. I'm pretty sure that's how that works, right? Well, well yeah. The only thing, uh, well, you know, I use some stuff with expiration dates. Yeah. But not breads and stuff, you know. So yeah. most of the stuff you use is from a time before expiration dates were a thing? Well, no, it's not that old. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, a a uh, Omaha Steaks ham. That's like Ford making a bicycle. That's weird. Well, you know, we th there were two hams in that load. One was a two-pound Wait, which ham. load? Well, the one load. The, the dumpster load? Yeah. So you there found two of the hams in the dumpster? There, one was a two-pound and one was a five-pound. How, how long have I been eating ham out of the dumpster? <laughs> For months, buddy. <laughs> That's why I'm in such good health. Holy shit. I feel reinvigorated, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so, uh, it's amazing, the good food. You know, I just got that organic honey, that, that thing of that. I noticed at Walmart they sell it for nine eighty four, and this was brand new, thrown away, and I was like, organic honey, I freaking love it. <laughs> Hell yeah. It, it had the original seal on it, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a good one. Yeah, I, 10 bucks worth. Somebody just threw that in the garbage. So wow. let me ask you, Summer, were you the kid that they warned not to take candy from strangers? Oh, they did warn me for that. Yeah, yeah, they did. They did. I was warned about it. <laughs> Nobody ever offered it to me, though. You know? <laughs> I was never offered any candy. Well, that's because you would knock on the door and tell them they had nothing coming on Halloween. Well, yeah, at Halloween I did get candy, and I, d I was doing this until I got about 14, and then one day I'm there getting candy, and a couple of the women say, aren't you a little old to be doing this? 
And so that got me to where, you know, I waited a few more years, and then I went back out again. Any, <laughs> any way to get free candy, man. Okay. Into it. You took a little gap with your, uh, your candy cultivation? Sure. So if I was uh, too old at 14, at 17, I'm just right. Well, that'll That's show them, yeah. Thought. Well, hell yeah, man. I mean, let me ask you, what's the best batch of laced candy you ever got? Laced candy? Well, I mean, you know, coming up in the 70s, you had to get high off at least one Nutter Butter, right? No, I actually, <laughs> we knew the street I grew up on, I knew everybody on the street. Oh, I'm sure. A and uh, we used to get you. things in the 70s, you know, somebody would do popcorn balls and put it in a, in a plastic bag, you know, uh, uh, a plastic bag, and you'd get that. And we, we never thought anything about it, and there never was any kind of problem with drugs or razor blades or none of that. Yeah. And then they'd have bobbing for apples. If you've never bobbed for an apple, you got to try it. I'm telling you. Uh, were you good at bobbing for apples? Is anybody? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're getting it, and you're dunking yourself, and you're getting water in your nose, and it's just a fun time. Yeah, it's like waterboarding for Christians. Yeah. Did you ever bob for apples out of a dumpster? <laughs> <laughs> that I have not done, no. I'm glad we draw but, the line somewhere. You but, know what's terrifying to me is I've eaten food at their house before. <laughs> yeah. We well, did not have ham. Yeah. But... I think that's the only thing keeping me alive right now is the fact that I know I didn't eat the ham. Yeah, no, yet. well, the beef, though, yeah. That, that was also from the garbage, yeah. Well, I'm yeah. noticing a trend I here. I feel sick now. No, so one of my favorite things Summer will do, he hasn't done this one in a while, but he used to be the master of this one. Um, I, he'd, I'd walk in, and he'd have this big crate of beer, and then he would hand me a beer and be like, here, Addy, have a taste of this. I just picked him up from uh, our beer guy down the road. And uh, I would pop it open and take a drink, and he'd be like, horrible, isn't it? And then I would just be stuck with a tall boy that was just the worst beer I've ever tasted. And Summer just like, better finish it up. <laughs> you found those in the dumpster, too? Or? Well, I used to, I don't know, you know, about expired beer. Like, after it goes at its date, I had a guy in Little Rock, these $40 cases of craft beer, it'd sell to me for like 10 bucks, no tax, so. So you'll eat expired ham and beef, but not drink expired beer. Oh, no, I'll drink expired beer, but not eat expired meats and stuff, no. Only, I check all of them. Only Except trash. for the ones you find in the dumpster you don't check intentionally so you don't see if it's expired. Well, you know, I smell it before I cook it, and we find out if it's good, and we're not dead yet, so it must be working. It smells like kitty litter. <laughs> well, sometime when it's close to a bag of kitty litter, it, it indeed does smell like kitty litter. Dude, yes. our apartment smells crazy. It smells like cigar smoke and just lost toys. Still looking for that title, yeah. <laughs> Man. All right, so you got any uh, uh, words of wisdom to impart on these folks before I get you out of here tonight? Yes, don't take any wooden nickels. Okay, let's hear it for karaoke with Summer. <laughs> Man, you guys have been absolutely fantastic tonight. The best crowd in Omaha. We own Sunday night. And I want you right now to give all your love, all your attention, all your noise to Rashad Vaughn. Uh, I'm black. Uh. <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay, damn. White people always trying to shut a brother down. <laughs> yeah, quick, quick draw, huh? Uh, quick and draw. Uh, um, I, I, you know, speaking of the Miley Cyrus record, I thought I was Taylor Swift, you know, but that's how that. Yeah, I, yeah, that's how I don't listen to the white people shit. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't. Um, I went. I, I recently met a chick. I recently met a chick uh, last night. And uh, she said I was a 10. I was like, really? You were six. She was like, what is that? I'm like, you're 666. You're the devil. <laughs> yeah, and I'm an angel. You know what I mean? 222, 111, 444. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm an angel from, angel from the sky. So I'm just here to deliver you that message from God. So, <laughs> yeah, her breath, yeah, her breath. Luckily, her breath didn't stink. So that kind of made her an eight. You know what I mean? Hopefully her breath 
that down there on her other mouth doesn't doesn't stink either. So, <laughs> you know, you got to clean yourself, la you know, ladies. You got to clean yourself. You know, you you know to attract a man or get a man go down there. So, you know, so damn. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean. I mean, I dated. I mean, I dated women that breath her, her breath stinks, and the other mom smells worse. And I'm like, I live. I'm like, yeah, your breath stink from your mouth, but your breath stink from the bottom is goddamn. I was like, no wonder, no wonder, no wonder you can't get no damn man. I'm, like, I'm single. Oh, man. Like, I wish I had a man. I'm like, maybe if you clean down there, you will get a man. So. All right, interview portion. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Rashad Vaughn, everybody. Oh, my God, man. You you doing new material is one of my favorite things ever, <laughs> dude. <laughs> it's, uh, well, I, well, uh, well, summer, it is summer. He told me, like, I, I need brand new material every two, every two minutes, Rashad. I need brand new material every two minutes. Not every two minutes. He needed two minutes every week. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what, he, that's what he said. That's exactly what he said. He's like, I want to talk to you for a second. Well, sure, yeah. I was scared. I'm like, oh, Lord, what what I do? <laughs> yeah, you, you're looking to see if you had tattoos. Right yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't. No. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm not scared of you, Summer. No, I like that. You said, uh, I mean, the stuff about uh, the, the woman with the, the bad breath in her vagina, that's uh, that's rough, but I mean, it's been, I've, I've been there. So it's like, it's like. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, a girl tried to make me go down there one time. I'm like, uh, I don't, I don't do that. And yeah, and you're, the, it stinks down there too. So, so. so what's your uh, what's your uh, method of you sort of disengaging from the coochie, if you will, to where you're down there and you know you're kind of uh, you're kind of in prime position to strike, mm -hmm. and then you're like, oh, it, it smells like uh, the summer's ham in here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It smell yeah. It smell like her. It smell like her armpits. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, okay. yeah. Or it smells like the seat from uh, Notorious B.I.G. toilet uh, that he left. <laughs> that he left when he died. So you know, R.P. Biggie, but. Yeah. You know, R.I.P. man. R. But yeah, I'm like, ah, Lee. Is that I'm, the face you make? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, ah, Lee. She's like, what's wrong? I'm like, uh, I, I can't. I gotta get out of here. I gotta go. <laughs> so you just outright were like, no, we're not doing this. Uh, yeah. She was like, was like, come on. I'm like, nah. Uh -uh. Now, had she uh, given you a uh, fellatio up to this point? Oh yeah, she yeah she has. Oh okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, you can't kiss me. You can't kiss me in the, on the mouth, but you can kiss me uh, with my on my John Hancock. <laughs> Your John Hancock. Yeah, on my fire. Firearm, yeah. yeah. Firearm on the barrel. Yeah, on the barrel, on the barrel. Um, at one point, <laughs> you guys are seeing what's happening on the screen, right? It's, <laughs> it's a visual cue, but man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, if a person did that to me, I would not be scared. I'm like, I'm not scared of you, so pull the trigger. <laughs> oh, yeah, just, uh, finger guns. Yeah. I was like, I'm not, I'm not dead. I will not die. I will not die. <laughs> well, yeah, so you said 222-111-444. Two, 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 one, 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 four, four, four. Mm -hmm. What is that? Uh, that's uh, that's the angel's number. I the, looked I looked it up. So the angel's number. Yeah. What What do you mean? Yeah, I mean the angels. Yeah, angel angels from the sky. So like yeah. the the phone to heaven. Yeah. I mean the message from God. So. So two two. Well, I got the interview part. Yeah, yeah. So the uh, the two 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 <laughs> one 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 four four four. That's nine digits. Yeah. I mean yeah. I know, but I looked it up and that's. And I was like, what is the angel's number for the, for the, uh, for the joke? And it was like, one, 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 two, 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 four, four, four. So that's. What did you look up though? Yeah, yeah, for the compliment of the joke. When, you know. <laughs> no, no, I'm just trying to figure out. So like, this is the phone number to talk to heaven and be like, give me three angels. I've got five hundred dollars. Uh, I need a blessing. Yeah, ba ba basically the an uh, angels number, basically. So. Okay, all right, uh, man. Sober until February first. Uh, then what are you doing? Getting blackout drunk. You're getting blackout drunk. Yeah. What is your drink of choice when you uh, decide to in embark? Uh, I will get a. Uh, <laughs> if I do, I get a J uh, rum and coke, uh, Jameson and uh, Sprite. A rum and coke and a Jameson and Sprite. Mm -hmm. So you're really gonna get trashed. Yeah. That's yeah. that's crazy. A rum and coke and a Jameson and Sprite. Yeah, just to you know to celebrate Black History Month to get blackout drunk. 
you know. Is the Jameson because of my last name, Jameson? Yes. So yes. Black History okay. Month. Yes. Yeah. Also, wasn't Black History Month in February? Is this a recycled joke? Yeah. Did you just turn it around for yeah. Pride Month or what? Yeah. I, yeah. It's a re- recycled joke to the real those beautiful ladies that were in here in into my life. So then I can. Why, why do you tell think them they left? Yeah. They left because of you. <laughs> Me. What? Yeah. They left because of you. What, what did, did I do? Just maybe you had a beer. Maybe you had a beer. They probably were like, oh my god, we just want to stay here and look at the, his beer. But I don't know. So but they left because I don't have a beard. They came it, for Clem's beard. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You scared? Yeah, you scared them, and other other people that on stage scared them too. All the other what me? Yeah, saying all these racist shit. So all this ra- When did I do <laughs> racial shit? <laughs> Bring back the camera. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe uh. J- uh uh, Joe Hawkins uh, tur- turned him away. <laughs> now, Rashad, yeah. this is a reoccurring theme of your life and your stand-up that uh, you always blame everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> I like the mic, the cord fell out of the mic stand and you said the white people trying to keep a brother down. That's right. <laughs> when, when could we have planned that one? Yeah, I mean, it was just strategic on you guys' <laughs> part. Yeah, yeah, actually, I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, you know, white people, y- y'all, you white, po- y'all white folks, y'all talking cold, talk about, and then once a black dude come in there, like, we gotta be quiet because we don't want the, the, the black guy hear us. Rashad, what is all this perceived racism you've been getting from uh, Quick Draw? You're, uh, you're a beloved member of the show. Well, well, thank you. I'm just entertaining. I'm just here to entertain you. No, people. you are, man. I like it. You're in the I'm pocket. Just enterta- I'm just entertaining you guys. Don't take the, what I say. Don't take comedy seriously, okay? We yeah. just entertain it. We just. Fucking entertainers, guys. That's right. Don't skeet, take us skeet. anything seriously, okay? Skeet, skeet. Skeet, skeet. Skeet, skeet. You I'll know tell what I mean? you what. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that person don't skeet, so uh, I guess yeah. his uh, his other words is. <laughs> I don't know. Hell yeah, yeah man. Well, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm actually, uh, this is actually a very special episode, guys. Yeah, it is. Uh, very, yeah, very special. Wait, I do mean, you know? Tell us why. Tell us why it's special, Rashad. What's it's, special about tonight? Because it's the best episode since the Brianna Calhoun episode. Because, <laughs> because I enjoyed the Brianna Calhoun because the episode because she asked the right questions. That I'm like, man, I wish you guys would ask me that. She did know? have very, uh, very great questions. She did. They're penetrating yeah. questions, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I, you guys just asked, like, when the last time you hold a firearm? I'm like, dang, that is very, that's a stereotype. I, don't, I if, never. If, <laughs> if I remember right, though, when Marie asked you a really good question, yeah. it took you about 15 minutes to s- respond to it. Because I was, it look, was. I was looking for an answer there, and you're like, uh, uh, and you're just making up th- words and shit. It, it threw me off. I'm like, wow, I never, like, I'm thinking, like, it's going to be some bullshit generic questions, but she asked me a really good question. It's like, who my top five comedians are in the city? I'm like, oh wow, like, like this is intriguing. Nobody never asked me that. I've been waiting for another comedian to ask me that. But really? She, she asked me that. So yeah. And, and if you missed who his top five comedians are, we made him name all five names, and he gave us six names. <laughs> and Spoiler one, alert: one was himself. And one of them was me too. Yeah, uh, who yeah that's weird. Yeah, <laughs> who apparently, I, I've moved off the the Mount Rushmore of Rashad's comedy. Yeah. Um, but no. Uh, so Rashad, this is a very special episode. Because Clem, can I get like some music or something? I, I don't know. Maybe don't some know. In, some music. Um, see, see, they, see, you know, see, they talking in code. See, I don't know shit. Oversh- we've got the bit. We've got this. We got. I got you covered, baby. Um, man, so over the history of Quick Draw, there has been one comedian who has shown up to work consistently on time, not drunk. Has uh, dis- ha- after a discussion with Summer, literally started writing four minutes a week for Quick Draw and started crushing, bringing new stuff. Uh, he is in this room right now. Uh, and Summer, are you ready? I am proud to present Rashad Vaughn as our first regular Quick Draw comedy. What's here for him? Oh, thanks. Oh, man. Oh, well, thank you. Hell yeah, it's here, here. Yeah, I'm yeah. A, I'm a regular, okay. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> it's here. Oh, okay. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about this in the meeting. All right, come on. Yeah, Man, uh, Rashad, show him the hat made by Ashley, everybody. Look at it, everybody. Thank you, look thank you Ashley. Yeah. Show thank him, uh, look at the, you guys see the R? That's for Rashad. Rashad, it's for Rashad, not 
start well, for well, that don't stand for retarded. I'm not retarded. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that just yeah, to point out that yeah. was like three later in my punchline. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, do we have any more? Uh, R for regular. Regular. Oh, yeah. Regular. R for restoration. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Reparations. Yes. Yeah. Reparations. Yes. Yeah, they yeah the 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 legendary episode when they was like you you know you've been saying respiration instead of repuation. I'm like oh I didn't know that no no one didn't no one didn't check me on that they just let me let me get my shit off and like you know yeah. you've been saying respiration. We, we won't do that to you, Rashad. We will embarrassingly embarrassingly correct you on YouTube. Yeah, you did. So. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. That's right. Oh sure, we're big we're big on that, man. Yeah. But man, let's hear it for Rashad Vaughn becoming the first regular of Quick Draw Comedy. Thank you, thank you, guys. Hey, let's hear it for our ace bartender, Bob, on the other side of that wall, huh? You guys know the deal, man. Tip him well. Tip him graciously. We have a reputation as having the funniest comedians and the best tippers in this room. All right, guys, you've been fantastic. Have a safe trip. God bless you.